Now a question that comes up fairly commonly for me is what is the difference between Strong Tone and Agrax Earthshade? And honestly, getting a look at these three guys, you might come to the conclusion that the difference is not as marked as you might think. But I'm going to go over a couple of differences in application, and you will see a few little differences as we go through the painting process with these three guys. So nice quick one today, let's get started. So we have here four individual US infantrymen that I have painted up using the speed painting colors in a previous video. I'll list them in the description just in case you want them, but they're not really too important. And honestly, neither is the, uh, <laughs> the basics of what I've done here. You can see the other fellas lurking back there. What I'm going to do is hit each of these with one of these different shades in turn. And of course, we'll start with Agrax Earthshade. I'll tell you each one as I'm applying them, and then we'll give them all sort of 30 to 40 minutes to dry, come back and get a look at what they look like when they're finished. So first off, let's go with Agrax Earthshade. So straight from the pot, let's start applying this all over the miniature. Now one of the things I like about Agrax Earthshade is not needing to do any prep work. You know, this comes straight out of the pot. All you need to do is make sure that you are shaking it before you use it. And I mean shake it thoroughly. Uh, one of the most common questions about Agrax Earthshade is how do I get it to stop drying funny? And the short answer, almost invariably, is shake it. So make sure you are giving it a good you know, not just back and forth once in your hand, but shake it like you would a paint. It is still, you know, what's the word? Pigment and binder and all that sort of stuff. So let's finish this fella off. And then we'll move on and we'll apply Strong Tone. Now this is the Army Painter Quick Shade. And I'm applying this straight from the pot. So I've got a little bit of my palette down here because of course this you need to squeeze out onto something. And you'll see this is a slightly more sort of glutinous stickier kind of finish. And uh, I have to admit, this is not ordinarily how I would use it. I tend to like using a little bit of medium in there, uh, which I'll show you in a couple of seconds. But same method, we're making sure to work it into any recesses. And anywhere that it sort of gloops up a bit too much, you can draw it away with your brush while that's still wet. So here in his arm, his elbow rather, let's just drag that away and apply it somewhere else. So we'll finish this one off too. Now you'll see straight away as this goes on, this is the mix of strong tone and the mixing medium. And this has a grayish, almost cloudy kind of finish. Uh, this softens out the shading effect and I think gives a slightly nicer result. Uh, this is half and half uh, mixing medium and strong tone. So you will need to mix this up on your palette. Um, or if you really like how it looks, you could go ahead just get yourself a big old bottle and uh, put a bottle of each in there. Uh, but you'll see this goes on in exactly the same way. It does tend to collect fairly similarly to the other Strong Tone. Now finally, as kind of a surprise here, what I've got is Ali's Brown Liquid. Now I've done a video on this before, but just for the record, this is four parts Agrax Earthshade, four parts uh, Seraphim Sepia, about two parts of, what is it, Lamian Medium, and then a few drops of Drakenhof Nightshade, just for shade in there. Uh, yeah, the recipe's a bit extreme, but uh, it does give you very interesting results. So just to compare against these other sort of, you know, one and done solutions from the pots, let's see what Ali's Brown Liquid will do once we've uh, put that over the miniature. So once I've finished this fella, we'll give these guys all about that 40 minutes to dry. Uh, and then we'll come back and get a look at what they look like sort of straight finished. Uh, because a couple of them do have additional stages that they recommend. And I don't think it would be fair uh, not to include those for a comparison. So let's finish this off. And then through the magic of television, you won't have to wait 40 minutes. So Agrax Earthshade, fairly simple, comes straight out of the pot gives nice deep shading, and it does alter the color a little. It brings everything down just a bit. So if you're using a very bright primer or base coats, Agrax Earthshade is gonna do plenty. Now, side by side, let's get the uh, strong tone straight from the pot. And that is an interesting comparison to put them together like that. Uh, it's a little difficult to see on camera, I'd say, 
But the main difference between the two of these is that uh, the strong tone has slightly darker recesses. So wherever it collects, it's going to give you a darker finish. Um, however, if we get a closer look at their sleeves, I think the strong tone by comparison to the Earthshade, uh, strong tone looks a little cleaner. So you could go ahead and highlight from this much more quickly. Now I'm going to give the game away slightly here in that the uh, half and half mix of strong tone and quick shade medium, this is my favorite. Uh, from here, it's got plenty of shading. Uh, the high points have all been left intact, so you know you wouldn't have to highlight this if you didn't want to. Chuck them on the table straight away. Uh, but if you did want to highlight them, it would take you no time at all. Like some of these areas have been pretty much marked out by the shade for you. And then finally, one which always works a little better than I think it's going to. Uh, Ellie's brown liquid always looks super yellow when it first goes on. Uh, but once that's dried, that's actually quite a nice finish. Again, something that you could go straight to highlighting if you wanted to. Um, I quite like how that looks. What I do want to do, though, is very quickly grab a matte varnish, and I want to spray these three to show you what the varnished versions will look like. So after varnishing them, I slapped a quick base on so that they would match the rest of my US Infantry Army. And you can see that all lined up like this, there's actually not a huge amount of visible difference. The fellow on the end here with the Agrax Earthshade now, in person, he is visibly a little bit darker than the other two. And, you know, it surprises me as much as anybody, but if I were to pick a single way to just smash out a huge amount of infantry, I would go for the half and half. Uh, and so I think I'm going to order myself a couple of pots and uh, mix up, you know, mix up a ready batch of half and half, strong tone and quick shade. This looks really good. All I'd do now would be to highlight their skin, I think, and maybe a little bit of metal on the weapons, but they're finished. So hopefully that does answer those questions of what looks better. You know, I think a large part of it depends on what it is you're actually doing. You know, if you were painting something where you wanted a slightly darker finish overall, then Agrax Earthshade might be your choice. Or if you want something simpler, and, you know, you are going to go ahead and varnish it to get rid of that shine, then the quick shade, you know, the strong tone would be the choice. But this fella on the end, the surprise winner out the end, I really think that is a great finish. So as always, any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. Thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Connor, and Fred. So, thank you very much for your time on it all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.